Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife and today we've come to RSPB Minsmere on the Suffolk coast. Now Minsmere is known for its bird life, but I'm hoping to see some deer as well. So let's get going. RSPB Minsmere is a large reserve in Suffolk on the southeast coast of England. The area is a complete mosaic of habitats which includes reed beds, lowland heather, saline lagoons, deciduous woodlands and wet grasslands. The reserve is managed for wildlife and as such it provides a great opportunity to see some rare and interesting species. So I've just came across to Island Mere Hyde and as you can see I'm all by myself which is a bad sign because there's quite a lot of people about already and if there's no one here that probably means there's nothing to see. But there is a raft of birds out there in the centre of the water so I'm going to take a closer look and see what they are and see what they're doing. Whilst taking a closer look at this raft of coots feeding in the centre of the lagoon, I noticed a much larger bird flying overhead. This is a marsh harrier. Marsh harriers are reed bed specialists. Their diet includes amphibians, mammals and some small water birds. There are currently almost 400 breeding pairs in the UK, but they were once extremely rare. In 1971, there was only one breeding female left in the whole country. Marsh harriers are not the only rare reed bed specialists at Minsmere. I noticed some small birds much closer to the hide and knew straight away that these were bearded tits. This bird is a female and is a plain brown colour, but it is the male of the species that gives them their name. He has a brown body with a slate grey head and either side of his face he has striking black cheek patches that are actually more similar to a moustache than a beard. Although these birds are quite common in Europe, there are only thought to be around 600 pairs in the UK. Just like many small brown birds, they move very quickly and soon they disappeared back into the reeds. Just in time for another spectacular bird to arrive. The Great White Egret is a large member of the Heron family that has only recently colonised the UK. They were first recorded breeding here in 2012 and up until 2005 there have been less than 300 sightings in the whole country. I can't find any up to date information on their current UK population but in 2017 there were less than 13 successful nests. Great white egrets have a similar diet to the grey heron. You can see here how the bird stalks through the shallows and then lunges, snatching its prey. These are small fish, but it can take larger prey, including amphibians, reptiles, waterfowl, and they've even been recorded catching birds in mid-flight. So just behind me is the tower hide. It gives it perfect views out across the reed beds. Let's go and see what we find. Aside from the great views, there was nothing else to see from tower hide. So I started walking further north through a small patch of deciduous woodland. I saw a flash of green ahead I managed to get a few seconds of footage of this green woodpecker. 
He flew away from the other side of the tree, but then I heard some leaves rustling slightly further away and spotted this male monkjack. Monkjack are the smallest species of deer in the UK. They grow to around 50 centimetres tall and only to a weight of up to 18 kilos. These deer are non-native and were introduced to Woburn Park in Bedfordshire in 1838. They soon escaped and have now spread across most of southern England. So we've just seen that monk jack, but the reason I've actually came here today is in search of its much larger relative, the red deer. So we're going to take a two kilometre trek now onto the heath and hopefully come across some big stags. On my way to the heath I passed by Tree Canopy Hyde. I went to the top but there wasn't anything to see so I continued walking. At this point I got a little bit lost and although I was following a trail I'm pretty sure it wasn't the main one but after an hour of zigzagging through the woods I finally made it to the heath. All across the heath there were dragonflies enjoying the autumn sun. This is a male common darter. Common darters, as their name suggests, are common throughout England, Ireland and Wales, but slightly less so in Scotland. This is an extremely agile and active predator that catches its prey in the air. They are on the wing until very late in the year and are often seen flying all the way into the beginning of December. So there's been a bit of a change of plan. After walking quite far and speaking to a lot of people, they said it's another hour walk to where I want to be going. Um, and because it's getting towards midday now, the deer aren't gonna be very active. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna head back down towards Minsmere, see some more, hopefully, see some more interesting birds, and then, drive over to the heath this evening and hopefully catch the red deer. Let's go see what other interesting birds we can find. Sometimes you have to make yourself available to luck and as I walk back towards Minsmere, passing by a beautiful pebble beach, I notice some dark shapes far off across the salt marsh. These are the largest terrestrial mammal in the UK, red deer. This is only a small herd and is made up of two hinds, a calf and a brocket. This is the name given to two year old male deer. At this age they have their first set of antlers but they are single pronged and do not have the additional spikes of larger stags. Throughout the daytime, red deer are usually secretive and usually very difficult to find. They had seen me and soon they made their way off into the woods. I carried on back towards the main part of the reserve and passed a field of short grass peppered with rabbit holes. I saw what I initially thought was a rabbit, but then as I took a closer look, I realised it was actually two common curlews. It seemed the one in the background wasn't keen on company, and it soon chased the other one away. These birds were quite far off, so I walked slightly further south to the conveniently named North Hyde.
This hide looks out across shallow saline lagoons and clear earth scrapes. From here, I managed to get better views of a curlew. You can see how they use their long curved beaks for probing into the ground and catching worms and other burrowing invertebrates. Over the past 30 years, curlew breeding populations have been plummeting in the UK. Initial research suggests that this might be down to a change in farming practices or increased nest predation. From the North Hyde I spotted another bird that has a very adapted beak. Although this might look similar to the great white egret from earlier, this is actually a little egret. They're around half the size of the great whites and like them they're a relatively new addition to the countryside. Little egrets first bred in the UK in 1996 and are slowly expanding their wintering and breeding range further north. They fish in a similar style to herons and great egrets, stalking through the shallows and then spearing any suitably sized prey. This one was clearly an expert angler. During the 15 minutes that I was watching it, it managed catch after catch. I can't be sure, but it's likely the prey here are free spying sticklebacks. So I've just come out of the North Hyde now and I've managed to crash into Fred from the channel Watch Our Deer and we're going to go to Wesselton Heath and hopefully film some big stags. Wish us luck. We've come to Wesselton Heath now and way off in the distance behind me there is a group of red deer underneath the trees. Now hopefully my zoom lens is going to be good enough and I'm going to be able to get some great footage of them. Let's go. Lucky for me, my new camera has quite a good zoom and I managed to capture some okay footage of the deer. I scanned across them, checking to see if I could spot a stag, but they were all hinds, calves and a couple of brockets. Seeing these brockets to me was a bad sign, as throughout the rut, red deer stags would usually chase them away. Maybe I was too late, maybe the rut had ended and maybe the stags were no longer here. I spoke to a few people and they said that in the past they had seen stags further into the heath so we carried on down the track with only 30 minutes of light left I didn't think it was going to happen. So we've been continuing down the trail searching for some stags and we've came across these fly agaric mushrooms. Fly agaric are the classic fairy tale mushroom. They grow to around 15 centimetres across and have a bright red head dotted with white blotches. Like many other mushrooms, their heads turn outwards with age. The one on the right here had actually inverted and was holding a small puddle of water. Whilst I was filming these mushrooms, one of the people I'd spoken with earlier came over and told us that a stag had just been seen further up the track. So we hot footed it back, hoping to get some footage before the sun went down. My phone had died by this point so I couldn't flog my excitedness, but seeing this stag's antlers move above the heather was one of the best wildlife sightings of my life. He was an impressive beast who walked with such confidence and power. His antlers were massive, possibly the biggest I have ever seen on a living animal and he soon set to work letting all the other deer know that he had arrived. The young brockets had disappeared by this point and were probably keeping a low profile somewhere out of sight. They wouldn't pose any challenge to him at their size but he would still see them as a threat and would chase them away if he saw them. If a stag can keep a harem throughout the rut, he will likely be the father of all the calves born the following year. According to passers-by, this stag is far bigger than his competition on the heath and hasn't had to do any fighting this year. 
He was paying a lot of attention to one hind in particular, and it soon became evident why. Mating is over quickly with red deer, but in the peak of the rutting season a dominant stag can mate with lots of hinds in a single day. Okay then, as you can see I'm back home now. I had probably the best day watching wildlife I've ever had in England. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe and maybe check out some of the other stuff on the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.